You're not going to like what you see. The stocks are trending lower today. As signs point to a U.S. economy that is slowing down. Joining us now to talk about it is Eddie Gabor. He is the co-founder and CEO of Key Advisors Wealth Management. He specializes in, in money manage, management. Mr. Gabor, I, I thought a slowing economy was what the Fed wanted. Clearly, it seems that Wall Street disagrees. Yeah, well, the biggest problem with today's number, and this was pretty alarming uh, to me, and I really wasn't expecting it to be this bad, was it wasn't just a deceleration of the economy because you would have thought that would be a good thing for the soft landing camp, but it was the big spike in inflation. Uh, today's number was deflationary. In a deflationary environment where growth is slowing and inflation is accelerating uh, is the worst case scenario for investors as well as the Fed. Because now they're in a situation where normally you could potentially talk about cutting rates because things are slowing down. But you can't do that if inflation is becoming a worse problem. Uh, so they're in a really bad spot. Now, look, one data point will not mean that it's a trend change. But if we see this same trend happening uh, over the next month, it should raise big alarm flags for uh, investors. And we just feel blessed that we are sitting on a nice cash position. Uh, over the last couple of weeks, so uh, we haven't really taken that big of a beating here in this downdraft that we've seen the last two weeks. Mr. Gore, address, if you will, something that a lot of consumers are concerned about, which is we talk about inflation, but we never talk about greed, which is that I have not met many shareholders that are losing money in this economy, at least not to the rate that, that their investors are losing. Uh, we talk about the price of eggs, but nobody seems to want to talk about the fact that the last time egg prices rose, there was not a major problem with the largest producer of eggs. We talk about housing prices. Uh, we don't talk about the fact that foreign investors are now pouring into the market. How much of inflation is, is fueled by rising costs and how much of it is fueled by greed because people can say that, look, I can make more money in the United States than I can in China. Well, I think the biggest culprit of this inflation and these high prices is the amount of money that's been pumped into the system. Um, and when you look at, we've had over a decade of zero interest rate policy. And what that did is that spurred a lot of investments. It spurred a lot of speculation. And so a lot of money flew into these asset prices um, and as well as the foreign money that's come in, as you said. So when you pump the system and over pump the system with money, you're going to have inflation and you're going to cause asset prices to come up. And of course, you know, as a capitalist, if someone thinks they can get a higher price on the market, they surely are going to try to get what they can to maximize uh, profits. And right now we are in that scenario where once you see prices go up the way that they have, it's really hard to have them come down. And my concern is when you look at the scope of the problem, when you look at the debt issue that we have in this country, you look at the inflation is the only thing in our opinion that's really going to bring prices down is to cause massive demand destruction. And that means a recession. And no one wants to hear that, but I don't know any other answer to get prices down other than to have some type of recession or economic shock. Uh, and so we're in, a, we're in a predicament right now, and I think things are going to get worse on the inflation front before they get better, unfortunately. What is the Goldilocks scenario, uh, the right rate of inflation in, in jobs and productivity? You know, the Goldilocks scenario would be if today's number showed a slowing economy and inflation trending downward, uh, where and you start to keep the economy and the labor market tight. And that was the hope of today was we would see the economy slow, but not at a very fast pace, but we would also see inflation slow. Um, and, and we're not seeing that. So, But that would be, without question, the Goldilocks scenario. But again, you look at the price of oil, you look at the price of commodities. Uh, again, another risk out there is if in, uh, the Middle East starts to flare up again next week after the holiday is over, then you can see oil potentially go back up. So there's a lot of moving parts to get this inflation down. Um, and that last mile of getting inflation down is the hardest one. And that's what we're faced with right now. If I have my money in a 401k, I have been watching as we flirted with a Dow 40k about two weeks ago. Now we are dipping below 38,000. Should I be concerned about my money and what should I do? So it depends upon your time horizon. You know, if you're less than five years away from retirement, then yeah, I would be concerned with this market and look to hedge my bet. Uh, if you're 20 years away from retirement and you're still 
dollar cost averaging into your portfolio, I wouldn't be so concerned with shorter term moves. Uh, but I do think the next decade is a game changer in the way the models and portfolios should be managed. I believe a more active strategy versus passive is going to be appropriate because these big 10 to 20 percent swings that we're seeing, I think, are going to become the new normal. And so there'll be two to three times a year over the next decade each year where you may have to have some money on the sideline that's there for dry powder to buy, but more importantly, to protect your capital. Mr. Gabor, two um, drivers of inflation right now, housing prices. And we know now there are foreign investors coming into the United States market because it is a good way to make money and make it quick, which means that's driving out a lot of baby boomers who can't afford a house, uh, but are not baby boomers, but Gen Z and millennials who can't afford a house but also oil prices, and, and that is controlled by OPEC. Even countries like Russia that might want to um, raise the price per barrel because it looks bad for the current administration. So if I am out there and I'm listening right now, is there anything I can do to alleviate some of the misery that is now being wrought on me? So one thing you can do as an investor is own inflation, own asset prices that are tied to inflation. Uh, buy some commodities, potentially buy some gold, own some oil. Uh, there's always opportunities based on the economic cycle that we're in. For example, today's a pretty bad day right now uh, for the market, uh, but our holding tied to energy is in the green today. Um, also, our international exposure to India. There's other places to invest other than just the U.S. markets. Uh, and so I think we're in a, in a time period where you're going to want to own things that go up with inflation. And those would be the items that I just discussed. So this way, you actually benefit from rising costs. One man's fate is another man's fortune. Eddie Gabor, thanks for being with us today.